In this Sky Outdoor Show special, we take a look at Rab's new hydrophobic down. We test it scientifically and not so scientifically, all to try and work out whether or not that little picture of a down plume encased in a water droplet on the labels represents a down revolution or just marketing hype. Down is an amazing natural insulator. It has a higher warmth to weight ratio than any other natural or man-made material and it's properties that made it ideal for the outdoor industry. They use it in jackets and sleeping bags and it's the insulation of choice everywhere from the Himalayas to cold, dry days in the Lake District. When the temperature drops below freezing, there's nothing that I'd rather be wearing. But down does have an Achilles heel. In damp environments, the down will absorb water, which causes the plumes to collapse and lose their insulating properties. The down paradox is that it will keep you warm if you can be sure the temperature stays below freezing, but use it in the cold, wet, mixed conditions that characterise a Scottish winter, and you risk dangerously losing your ability to stay warm. Because let's face it, Down is brilliant but flawed. Getting the best out of it has always meant understanding its limitations. But what if we could make it even better? New this season, several outdoor manufacturers have been able to apply a hydrophobic coating to each individual down plume. Rab, for instance, worked with Nickwax to develop theirs. Here's one of their designers, Ben, to tell us more. We've developed a a formula which we apply to the down during the down processing so we're, we're applying this to the down at source all of the water repellency is on the down rather than on the outside of the garment so there's a delicate balance between having the right amount of water repellency but also not affecting the loft or the performance of the down itself that's great but what does it actually mean we made a trip to Sheffield University to try and make a bit more sense of it. Now I can demonstrate this with this sand that's been given a similar hydrophobic treatment. And if I pour it into the water, you can see it doesn't really behave like normal sand. It's all clumping together. Now if I pour some of this off, and then I just spoon a little bit of what's left onto this blotting paper, you can see that the sand's almost completely dry underneath. But it's not quite as simple as that with down. Firstly, down does have a natural resistance to water. It actually takes prolonged contact with water to make it collapse fully. And Rapp's hydrophobic coating won't prevent this from eventually happening. The real difference lies in the recovery time. To understand this, we added a sample of normal down and a sample of hydrophobic down to some dye. We mixed them until they both collapse and let them sit for 30 minutes. We then removed some surface water, teased the plume apart and took a closer look under a microscope. At 400 times magnification, you can see that very little dye has penetrated the centre of the hydrophobically treated down. The plume collapsed, but at its centre it was still essentially dry. Compare that to the normal down and you see that even at its centre, many more of the plumes have become waterlogged and have clumped together. Even where this hasn't happened, you can see that the down appears to have a blue tinge, indicating to us that, rather than just sitting on the surface, some of the dye has been absorbed. With this in mind, we headed out into the rain with two jackets, Ian's old non-hydrophobic neutrino endurance and my new hydrophobic one. So just under here for half an hour. Ugh, I've seen Queen's greatest hits all the way through. Now it's worth saying that these are exactly the sort of conditions that down jackets are not designed to be used in, but even in very cold conditions it's still possible to have problems with wet down products, be it spin drift pouring down your neck then melting with your body heat, or frozen condensation melting inside your tent when the sun comes up in the morning. The moisture created can affect performance. So Ian, we've been stood here for about an hour now in the rain, and I mean, I'm, firstly, I have to say I'm quite impressed with how well the five-year-old jacket has coped with these conditions. Yeah. Um, it's, only, it's only in the last 20 minutes or so that it's really started to lose its loft. But crucially now, your jacket is not a warm jacket anymore, is it? No, no, it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm very cold. And if we just compare the weight of these two jackets against each other, yeah, I mean, yours has become significantly heavier than mine because yeah, it's absorbed heavier. a lot more water. If we just have a look at the arms. So 
you can see that the, the down, the loft has completely collapsed on, on the old jacket, but you can see that this, the hydrophobic down is still, still providing loft. So what does all this mean? I'll start by answering the question that our boss wanted to know. Can I now pack and rely on down instead of synthetic insulation in the sort of mixed mounting conditions we often have during a UK winter? And the answer is no, I don't think you can. I don't believe that in its current form it fundamentally changes the conditions in which down should be used. Neither does it suddenly render all non-hydrophobic down products obsolete. Normal down is still a great product. At the start of the winter I was deciding between a hydrophobic wrap microlite jacket and a non-hydrophobic Marmot Quasar. I chose the Quasar because it fit me better, simple as that. Where hydrophobic down makes a difference is on the margins of where you'd usually be able to use it. The biggest benefit we found was in the recovery time. It'll really make a difference on multi-day expeditions where a slow build-up of moisture and limited drying time can take their toll on performance. And of course it'll also make a difference to all those people who use it every day in the winter, travelling to work or walking the dog. It's not a revolution, at least not yet, but it is an improvement to an already excellent natural material. What Rab have done is make down better at dealing with moisture without affecting its performance in any other area. It's a win-win and I think that's pretty cool.